all see the board originally turn the lights off. Two different. It's both. Is it better with the lights off? Cool. I like this. No, the 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 bulb is kind of going out. Um, those of you who don't know me, I'm Austin Taylor. Um, I'm the French teacher at Monterey. I'm also uh, one of our two campus technology leaders at Monterey. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about some different technology that you can use. Um, two of the one, the first two we're going to do um, can be either used by you for like preparation and stuff like that. Um, but they're also, you can put it in the kids' hands and let them do presentations and things with them. And then the last one, if we have time, um, is going to be kind of a management thing for you. Um, so if you have any questions later that you want to ask me, I put my email up here. Um, if you go to this URL that's right here, you can get a copy of it. It's going to open in a folder, uh, but the presentation's in there. And so you'll have all the instructions that are on there, there's some links in there um, that you can use. And it is case sensitive, so in that last little bit, the G is capitalized with everything else is lowercase. Give you a second to open that up. And it should open in a folder, and there's only two things in there, so just open the uh, presentation. The second thing is just a copy of some teaks that uh, will come in handy a little bit. And it should work for non-LISD people. I'm pretty sure I changed it the correct way, but if it doesn't pull up for you, let me know. Sorry. Okay. And we'll try to figure something out. Uh, when you open it, it should ask you to make a copy of it. So just click OK to that, and it'll give you your own copy of this folder. Okay, so just kind of an overview of what we're going to do. Um, there's three different programs, three different um, app-esque things we're going to talk about. The first one is uh, Adobe Spark. Anyone's ever heard of that? Um, do you love presenting in a room that's not yours and something like you're in? You're like, I want to use what I do normally, but then it's not set up like that. But Rudy's room is awesome. That wasn't an insult. <laughs> kind of sounded like one. Um, so Adobe Spark, um, it transforms ideas into stunning visual stories, creates professional quality graphics, web pages, and animated videos. Um, basically, it lets you do, they have three things. They have posts, which are going to be like pictures or infographics you can make. They have sites, which is a website, essentially. And then they have videos. And it's all template-based, and they all kind of, I'm going to need to be over here anyway. Thank you, though. Um, so we'll go through each one of those. I'll show you an example and then give you some time to work on them. Um, then we'll look at SmartAmp, which is basically filled with typos. Uh, it's just a big digital workspace, like a mind map kind of, or a, there's different um, spots you can assign kids um, on the workspace and they're uh, We'll go through and look at that. And then the last one, if we have time, um, we only have an hour and 15 minutes, so I'm not really sure how far we'll get. Um, but if the last one's just for you. Um, if I know our campus likes us to do um, our lesson plans in Google so we can share it. Um, so this is just a way to kind of make that maybe a little bit easier for you than having to do this huge template every single time. All of these are Google-based. Um, SmartAmp and Adobe Spark aren't Google products, but they're linked with Google. So you already have a login, and your kids already have a login. So you don't have to go through and make them set up anything like that. They can log in with their already available Google stuff. Unless, are y'all from not LISD? Mm -hmm. Do y'all have 
Google accounts? Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't know if that was a, just us. Um, so kind of how, what to expect, what we're going to do. I'm going to show you an example of each tool. Um, and then I'll kind of walk you through the basics of how, how to create the different things. And then after each one, I'll give you a little bit of time so you can make something and kind of get comfortable with it. And then we'll move on to the next one. Um, sorry. What? The, if you go to that side that's up there, is the link to the presentation. The present, the, um, if you want to copy that. If you, it has the presentation, then it has some other stuff in it as well. Side note while we're waiting for that, if anyone uses QR codes in your class, you know, those like pixelated box things, if kids don't have a QR reader on their phone downloaded, they can use Snapchat. Because we all know they have that. So you just have them open up Snapchat and hold down, like put the camera up and hold down on the box and it'll read it and it will it'll ask you to go to that webpage if you want. Sometimes you tell kids, scan this QR, what's a QR reader? Do I have one? I don't know. <laughs> I had a kid teaching that a problem this year. It kind of revolutionized the rest of my life every time they came up to vote. Did you know? Okay. Uh, so the first one we're going to look at, well, actually, before we go to that, um, a lot of the stuff for, that I got in my presentation, I did not write myself. Um, LISD has a great digital learning department. I kind of took their bits and pieces of information and kind of repurposed it into what we're going to do. Um, so there's some like straight from link, like a link to their presentations in some of these. Um, so I don't want to take credit for things I didn't do. Um, so Adobe Spark is the first one we're going to look at. Um, so you can create, like I said, there's three different things. We can create sites, we can do posts, and we can do videos. They have a more professional look and feel. There's lots of templates. Um, so if you have your kids make a poster, or if you want like your own rules posters or anchor charts or anything like that, um, you can make them look a little bit more professional than like, I did this in Google Slides, or I did this in PowerPoint, and it's kind of like you can tell you did it in Google Slides or PowerPoint. Um, after you make, uh, like I said earlier, you have, you sign in with your Google, so you and your kids already have accounts. Um, and then it gives you the option to download, to get a link, to email, or embed. So you have all these different options of how you can get it. So if you want a kid to link it to you, if you want to, put in a presentation, however you want it, you have multiple options there. Um, there is an app. I have not played with the app, so I don't know what features you get and what you don't get. Um, I've only used the, the web version. All right, so we're gonna look at some examples of the different ones. The first one we have for you is a post, and pretty much what the posts are are just graphics. Um, so there's just kind of some, uh, some uh, suggestions, you can do room posters, if you have words of the week, an uh, anchor charts, if you have like a classroom uh, vocab list, um, but basically what you do is you go through and it gives you the, the layout that you want and you can start from scratch on all these or you can use what they already have and then just go in and edit it. Um, and it gives you different sides, so you can do... Um, like Instagram posts, Facebook header, banner things. It gives you the option to do all of these um, these different sides depending on what you want. Um, so if you want like a cool banner for your door or whatever, you can go in and um, make it yourself. Um, and like I said, there's a ton of different things. Uh, down here, it gives you the option to tweet, share. They're lovely, appreciate instead of like. <laughs> I appreciate you. Um, and so I'll walk through how to do these in a little bit. I want to give you a kind of an example of each one first. Um, the second one we have are pages. And pages are pretty much a website. So if you've done like Google Sites before, um, it's <coughs> kind of the same thing. 
it depends on how kind of in depth you want to go. Um, if you've used Google Sites before, it's I think it's pretty easy to use and self-explanatory. Um, this one, you don't get as many like, you can create this link, you can create this page, it's pretty much all on the same page. So um, it takes you to kind of the main page and then if you scroll down, you can insert images, um, it gives you options to insert links, um, you can do multiple images on a page, um, text boxes, um, this is a, slide or glide or something and so it gives you the image and it kind of fills up the whole page and then you slide down more and it goes to a different one uh, so you could use these for I mean if you want to do your own like classroom presentations so like your notes and stuff you could do it in that way um, you could have kids do presentations with it um, have them you know put their family tree up here have them put pictures of a city have them put whatever they're doing and they can get up and they can talk about it and say, oh, here's my family, here's my mom, here's my dad, here's where I go on vacation. Um, and it's just a little bit more visually pleasing than looking at a PowerPoint that has like picture, picture, picture. Um, and then again, I just it makes me happy that you can appreciate it. So maybe you don't like it, but you appreciate it. Um, and again, I'll go through all these in a little bit so we can, um, excuse me, look and see how to make them. And then the last one, which personally I think this is the coolest part about um, Adobe Spark. The other ones you can kind of get in other programs or you can make them other ways. Um, but their video is very user friendly and you can do a lot of things with it. Um, so I made this last night. Don't make fun of me. Um, Oh, no. And I mean, literally, I made this in like 15 minutes. So if you have, you know, you want your kids to do a family tree or something like that, this is what this one is um, set on. Um, but it doesn't take long if you have what you need in front. So let's see if this works. And we don't I always have to have my language lab open. I just needed my computer, that would be mine. Oh, okay. Your lab works, I checked it earlier. The speaker too? Yes. If I have it set up right, we'll see. Sure. I do not have it set up right. See, I don't think those speakers are hooked up. Yeah. So, that's why I, I just, computer. my computer is. Well, they need to show me how, because <laughs> all year long I've been using the language lab speakers to, to make it work. I think I would have checked this off like the hour before I was in here. I checked everything else. There we go. Okay, so, and I, like I said, I'll go through and I'll show you how to make all of these uh, kind of step by step. But like I said, I made this in 10, 15 minutes. Um, it does it slide by slide, and then you can go back and record over it and everything, and I, it takes, it makes it easy. And so you get something that looks relatively professional and of nice quality, and you don't have to like sit there and cry because you don't know what you're doing. Aujourd'hui, je vais parler de ma famille. Voilà ma famille. J'ai une grande famille avec 11 personnes et 4 animaux domestiques. Chez moi, il y a 5 personnes, mes parents, mes sœurs et moi. Je m'appelle Michael B. Jordan. J'ai 30 ans et je suis bon. Ma sœur cadette s'appelle Simone Biles. Elle est sportive et petite. Ma sœur aînée s'appelle Gabby. Elle est grande, sympa et sportive aussi. And so then it puts that at the end because you're using the product and they have to have their plug somewhere. But like I said, I made that in 10 minutes. So you can have your kids do a longer one with the family tree and instead of having them sit there with the labs and and family, but like they'll have more fun with it because they get to do the backgrounds and they get to put in the pictures and all that stuff. And you'll see in a couple minutes, it's super easy to make. It's like photo story. I'm gonna say yes because I don't know what that is. But he said yes too, so we have a consensus. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I've never used that stuff. So but it's super. All of these are super simple. Um, 
kind of does it for you. So um, I'm going to walk you through how to do each one and kind of the basics, and then um, I'll give you um, a little bit of time to kind of play with it by yourself. Um, so if you have your device and want to um, look at it with me, um, I'll have it up on the screen, but if you, you know, I'm much more tactile. Um, I don't know, like I said, there's an app. I don't know how well it works. So those of you that don't have an actual like computer or Chromebook, um, I'm not sure what it's going to show you. Um, but if you go to spark.adobe.com, um, you sign in with your Google account, and then it's pretty much step by step from there. So it's spark.adobe.com. I'll go ahead and log out. So you should go to this page when you go when you uh, first go to it, and then if you just go up and log in, you may need to start now for free. I don't remember. Do you just? I think you should just be able to log in. There's your option. Yeah. Um, so you have the options. If you just do continue with Google, and then um, you may have to type in your email address depending on kind of what browser you're using, how it's set up, um, and sign in. It's going to take you to this page right here. Well, for you, it's not because it should take you to. Sorry, I'm trying to get to the page that it's going to look like when you get in there because I have stuff I've made. There we go. It should look like this page if you open it up for the first time. Um, so you have your posts, you have your pages, and you have your videos. Um, the post is going to be social, it says social media, graphics, posts, stuff like that. Um, this is going to be those posters. Um, so if we click on that one, like I said, it gives you the options. You can go down here and look at the kind of their different uh, templates and stuff. I will say, if you pick a template, that's what you're going to get. You can go in and change the backgrounds and stuff like that. It can be kind of weird and confusing, and you have to play around with it. Um, but you can also do start from scratch, which is what I'm going to click now, just so we can kind of look at the different things. So, <clears throat> excuse me, the first thing it gives you is going to be your big, like what you want the main text to be. Um, I'm just going to put it. And then down here, before you click continue, you have all of your sizes. So if you want, say you have a classroom Instagram and you want to post something on there, um, you have one that's going to put it in the box shape for Instagram. Um, the Facebook header, a Twitter header, um, poster slides, you can click more slide, uh, more sizes and if you do a Pinterest, a blog post, um, the YouTube theme, and it just kind of goes on and on. And there's just so many you can do. Um, so we'll do, I'll just go ahead and click Y for right now because it's right there. And then it gives you, it kind of, it gives you these like wonderful little inspirational quotes every time you click something. So while you're sitting there like, why is my internet so slow? You can read nice calming thoughts and not throw things across the room. Um, so it's going to pick something for you. But if you look, demo was my, what I typed in on that last page. So it's going to be the main thing on there. Um, and then it gives you other ones. So if you click on it, it's going to give you the, um, just going to give you the filter, sorry about that. So it's not going to give you like the picture that's back there, it's going to give you the filter that's over it and kind of the text that goes with it. Um, if you go up to layout though, it's going to let you um, change your size, uh, your sizes and stuff again. Um, it's also going to let you do like a grid. So if I want like a pretty picture over here and then words over here, I can do that. Do that. Um, but then you can also change it. So if I want a bigger picture and smaller words, I can drag the picture over. Or if I want the opposite, and then I can you know center the picture how I want it. Say I really like cars at night, it's stuck in traffic. We can focus in on that. Um, and it just gives you all these different, I want to look like a Texas flag, or other countries flag. So if you, um, 
have different, you know, you can change the layouts, you can change the sizes. Um, palette is going to do the colors for you. So if I don't like the ones that are up here, I can change all my colors. And what's great about these is you're not sitting there like, what color goes with what? If they're already kind of aesthetically pleasing. So you just pick the palette and it's going to change the font color, it's going to change the, the boxes and all that. Um, and then here you have the backgrounds again, so you can do the photos. Um, and again, this just kind of changes the colors and the filters on it. They're really big into filters, which is why this isn't my favorite application within it. Um, but you can change, again, the color. But it's, it's just going to make it a, it's going to get rid of that picture for you. And so I could really make a Texas flag if I wanted to. Um, and then you go through and you have your text, and it gives you this little wheel every time, and you're like, what's the wheel? But it changes to the different options that they have with, uh, within their program. And sometimes it's just kind of fun to go around in circles. And then like, oh, that's what I'm going to do because it's the last one I landed on. Um, you can use the add button here and you know, add different text, add different photos. Um, you can use your own photos with upload. Um, you can use, so it has like a Google Photos, it has Dropbox, um, find photos, you can search. Um, the search it does uses the, the Creative Commons license, so that means it's copyrighted for, for reuse with modification. Um, so you're not going to get as big of a selection, but there's no legal like strings attached because that's what they're used for. It's for us to do it that way. Um, like I said, post isn't my necessarily favorite part about it. It's kind of cool if you want to do like posters and stuff like that. Um, but that's pretty much all it is. You can do different things on it, but it's pretty much supposed to just be aesthetically pleasing. Here's this. Um, if we go back to their main site, after you've logged in, we have pages, um, which remember is the web stories. Um, it just kind of scrolls down. So you can use it, you know, we have Google Slides, we have some people use Prezi, PowerPoint, all those. In my mind, kind of the best thing to use this for, to use a page for would be like a classroom presentation. You could put all of your, instead of having like the, the slides and stuff, you put it on here and then they get all the information and it's a little bit more aesthetically pleasing and it's not so click, click, click. Um, and again, it's like the other side, it gives you these nice, keep your eyes on the stars. Um, but it's pretty user friendly. It's kind of step by step. So it's going to, it wants your title. So I can do demo again. Then you can add a subtitle. Do extra. I don't, I spell that right. I don't think I did. We'll pretend that I did. Um, and then you see these plus signs everywhere. And when you click them, it gives you your options. So this is kind of the, the landing platform. So this would be your title slide if you're thinking of it like that. And again, you have the same options. You can upload your own photos if you have them, um, or you can find photos. So I'm just going to do a search. And I'm very French centric because that's what I like teaching. Um, so oh, that's a pretty picture. And so it puts it behind it. And it does the sizing for you and all of that so you don't have to like sit there and be like, oh, that's too pixelated. Oh, I don't like that. So it does kind of all the hard stuff for you and just lets you focus on what you want. Nice. Um, so then it, if you, and it gives you these prompts all the way around. So scroll down to start your story. And then it gives you another plus sign. So I can do a photo. I can do text. I can put a button. Um, and a button is just a link. So if you click it, um, I'm going to put what I want the button to say. Lovic ISD, and then I type in the link down here. Um, so if you have like your own classroom website, or if you're doing, um, if you're having a project and you want to give the kids a link to, to this, because it's going to, remember we said it gives you like, you can download, you can do all that other stuff, but it gives you a link. So you can give the kids a link to it and they can go here and they have resources and stuff um, for assignments maybe. Um, it gives you the alignment options, so you want on the left side, you want on the right side, you want in the middle. Um, the thing I really don't like about the buttons is you can't put more than one on a row, unless I'm making that up. <coughs> yeah, it's going to add it on a different line. So if you want like three buttons, it's going to put button, button, button. Like I can't put 
put them horizontally like that. So in my head, that kind of bugs me. Yes, sorry. Question. Okay, so I'm just thinking of ideas for next year. And I think instead of having a notebook, like a notebook check, I'm gonna have my kids make their own website and mm -hmm. I'm just going to check their website. So my question is like posters. And we were just kind of talking like, okay, I'm gonna show them notes like mm -hmm. present tense AR verb endings. Okay, oh, here's my notes. Oh, let's talk about a pronoun that matches with what, what. Okay, so they can make a poster. Is there a way to tie in your poster to the page, like their own personalized web uh -huh. page? Um, so it gives you, if you're doing it on here, you have, once you go through and, and publish everything, it gives you, or create everything and hit save, there's a, it's a share button and it gives you the options. Do you want to do a link? Do you want to embed? Do you want to save the file? Um, so you could have them put a link and then you would have to click it and it's going to pop up. Okay, like so it's not But if you save it, okay. if you sit, like it gives you the option to download the file. So you can download it to your computer and then go in. And hit the okay. arrow, um, and you can either do a single photo, or oh. if you want like the photo grid, which you know, like photo, 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 photo. So I can do an electronic notebook. If you're, and this is kind of a tangent, and just my own personal. Totally fine. I love it. Um, if you're gonna have them do like a website instead of, uh, instead of like a notebook or whatever, personally, I think I would use Google Sites. Google Sites. Um, if y'all like, have, do y'all have? Like Google? I'm totally fine. With no, it. yeah, I I, do y'all have access to Google and stuff? Um, I don't know yet. Are you where are you teaching? I just got a new job. Tell soon. I don't know if y'all have. So maybe I'm but I know the kids have may or may not. I don't know. Well yeah, they have Chromebooks and they do have Google. Yeah. Okay. Because they're yeah. they're LinkedIn. Okay. Um so Did just, you say Google Sites is a little yes. bit better for them? Yes, sites. Mm -hmm. yes, I can use. Okay. And it's in the Google suite already, so you already have it in there. Um, personally, I think it's a little bit better for organization for okay. what you're thinking because you can put like here's a page. Like you can have them do like, you can make it more like a notebook. So you can have the home page would be like there, this is me, this is my class, yeah, yeah. this is what we're doing. And then you can have them add a page that's gonna be unit one. And they can put their notes and they can put everything in there like that. Um, it's real user friendly. Um, they call it, we, do you remember what they said it was? Wiggy something? WYSIWYG. WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get. So as you're creating it, you're putting it in the spot that you want it. Okay, and you can, do you have the option, this is all, I'm sure you do, you can like flip flop or move around or like, this Yeah. Wrong? Okay, because I'm just thinking kids will never and do it, it they'll never listen the first time, they'll never do it right the first time. Right. We know this, we're teachers, okay. And you can like publish it so it's like a real website and so okay. I So they just, can submit it to me and I just click, click, click and see their notebook? Yeah. Awesome. Um, I'd play around with it. It's really user friendly. Okay. I, or if you're kind of technologically in tune, mm -hmm. it's really user friendly. If you're scared of it, it's oh, I'm not scared. Not. I'll try anything and fail at least three times. But. And the great thing with Google is you can do anything and you don't screw up because it saves everything and you can just go back and fix it. Oh, this is cool. Um, no more losing two hours of work. Yeah, yeah. You don't. Your computer shuts down and you don't lose everything. Uh, okay. So then, in the teacher world, what would you use this for? To make posters for your classroom or to make your teacher web page? So wait, what was that word tonight? Or like, what would you do with this? I'm just showing you everything on Adobe Spark because it's there. My personal favorite. We're gonna get to a second. Is oh, the videos. Okay. Um, if I were using it, I would probably use this for notes, maybe instead of a PowerPoint or a Google Slide, because okay. I can put, we're gonna go over predator tense or you know, whatever, scroll down, here's some notes, scroll down, here's some other stuff. And it's just, a, it's, it does the same thing as a slide okay. or anything like that. It's just a little bit. Same thing as PowerPoint, more, it's more aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. Okay. Um, so when you do that, do you have them with little follow, you know, fill in the blank with what you see on the screen? I mean, is that how Personally, you I do. You do, okay. Um, but that's, that's just my thing. Oh, I've never, and I just like this is stuff I've learned this summer. So I've ne I haven't cool. issued this in class yet. Okay. Um, their, I think their kind of idea for it is more make a website. Um, but we're teachers; we can do whatever we want. <laughs> um, so you think the Google Google site would be better than for them to create their own website? Personally, I think it's easier. Okay. What do you? Do you I, I agree. And, and from what I'm seeing on this, it's just one big long it scroll, is. It right? Is. Yeah, you where, just keep scrolling down. Where with so sites, you have a menu. Yeah. So you can click on unit one notes and then yeah. hide it and click. You on can it. have the biggest thing that I'm gonna that I'm gonna do this year is that they're gonna be there's gonna be one all those papers that you see over there. This mm -hmm. is my room. All those papers oh. that you see over there were handouts that I gave at the beginning. You need to know how to say these words. Put them in your binder. These are their binders. 
they put their binders up there the first week and probably never got them again. Really? Yeah. That, I mean, so you so, write paperless. I want to. That's okay. my goal. Um, but I I wrote a grant for some Chromebooks and I, don't, I haven't got it yet. But if I do, then I don't need those anymore. They'll have. They won't be able to say, well, I don't remember how to say it was or I was. Well, there's your one click away from finding it because I gave it to you. You stored it in this folder digitally, and you have it every day. So that's, so that's after you I am present, praying every day. After you present, let's say, the preterite, then afterwards then you share it to all your students, and they just store it in their Google site folder? Or well, in their Google Drive. And they, they'll have a Google Drive just okay. automatically because they're – a Coronado or an LISD student, they have a Google Drive. Uh, okay, anyway, so yeah, sure. and they have, and they'll have a folder, and I'll, I'll recommend that they make a resources folder in a specific place under their Spanish class, because they'll have other classes where they're using the Google Drive also. Okay. And, and anytime that they need to remember how to say, I was, or I went, or whatever, um, they'll, they'll be able to open up that document and find it again and then just keep going with whatever, with whatever they're doing. Okay, so I do a notebook check to, okay, let's just face it, language is not everybody's thing. I get it, mine was physics, I cheated, I admit it, all right? Um, but I like to like kind of help them with a notebook test. So would you, how would you recommend doing it since you already kind of have the system in play? Just like, hey, take out a Chromebook, show me what you got, where's your resources, do you have- Well, it's still a dream right now, because I, oh. I, I don't have a card. You don't have no, and I've learned everything that he's learned yeah. this summer. Okay. Um, as far as that goes, what most some teachers have done it kind of differently. Yeah, a just, lot I of don't... teachers are using Classroom, and if they have access for, on a regular basis to Chromebooks, which you said they have Chromebooks, so that's I, what I've heard. I mean, I don't we'll see know how that works. And I know in our in LISD, it's kind of a dream right now because all the core classes have them, but oh, okay. world language doesn't, so it's kind of hit and miss. But uh, uh, I know some teachers have used Classroom, so you set it up and you add them in Google Classroom, and then everything's there. And since you're the teacher, you have access to all the stuff they've turned into you. Oh. Um, I know some other teachers, and they've done it. The one that I saw happen was in a, I think, a fifth grade classroom, okay. and she did. Um, oh, sorry. I don't know. That's weird. Um, she did her science notebooks in a Google slide, I think. So she, so each kid had their own Google slide made that was shared with the teacher. And that way you have access to it and you can see what they've done and you kind of can, if you want to go in and help them. I just them, want to hold have. them accountable mm -hmm. for, like you're saying, do you have your resources with our notes in it? Did you, like if you yeah. go paperless, do you, can you show me your And so you can do like order? the slide that way and then they, or you can have them have their own folder. And that way, if you want to check it, you don't have to check it right in front of them because you have access to it. Oh, I like the intimidation. Hey, show me your <laughs> yeah. notebook. Like, I don't just have a stack of notebooks and I go through right. them while they're at like lunch or whatever. I make them bring it to me and present it because then it like holds them more accountable. Mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, now I know why I got a twenty. Uh, okay, sorry, miss. Here's here's the other thing, and this is just gonna oh. open up your mind to more. With the Google Sites, you can have two or three working on the same one, and they share it with each other, okay. and they all have edit permissions to that okay. to that site. So. It's not just holding one accountable if you want to do like collaboration is like a big thing now in, in LISD, well, the Coronado, especially, mm -hmm. I don't know about others, but they want us collaborating. They, they want students working together in group work and, and with Google Sites, you can invite other students or other people. They don't have to be sitting next to each other. They could be, yeah. they could be at the computer, home. you know, or yeah. something that can sit at home. And Google has messaging systems built in, so they can legitimately be on I mean, they could. One kid could be in another state for a family thing, and still yeah. be working with their partners so and not be able to talk like that. So the limitation becomes not your, right. as far no. as you can. Yeah, yeah. And be, okay. not being very creative. I, no, but I want to get ideas because y'all know about this stuff, and I need to know what y'all know. And so that's kind of like I said, their pages and their and their posts are kind of cool. My big takeaway when I was sitting through all this is definitely their videos. Um, you saw my video 10 minutes um, basically what you're gonna do is the same thing on all of them so you sit there and it gives you this um, kind of type in so this is gonna be your your um, your first slide your title so like the one I did last night I put not then and for some reason whenever I think of examples it always goes to a family tree and I don't know why that is and maybe I need to get out of French one world um, but I mean you could have them do like a vacation you could have them um, I know if you're 
I don't know what other districts, kind of how y'all are set up, but we have a travel unit. So we could have like what you do at the airport or you could explain a trip or some people make like passports and they have to write about a country or something. You could have them do it all here and you can do the, the writing aspect. There's a place to put in text, but you can also hear them speak it. So you can have, you can do both the writing and the speaking uh, aspects of it. So you put in your title and you click next, just like on all the other ones. And they have templates again. If you want to play around with them, if you want to make your own template, that's up to you. Um, mine, I did start with scratch. I just think it's a little bit easier than having to deal with the stuff that they put in there already that you don't want to deal with. And you get all these great inspirational quotes. You know, aim for the moon, yeah. Okay. Um, and it gives you tutorials if you want to go through that. Um, their videos, that one's only a minute long. Um, I don't like tutorials. I like to mess things up and then get mad and go back like two days later and watch the tutorial and get mad at myself for not watching it the first time. Um, but it gives you this every single time. So it gives you the first slide um, and it gives you, you can put a video here, you can put a text here, a photo, um, icon, and we'll go over what all of those are in just a second. Um, but if you go over here to the side, it gives you all of your options for, uh, for themes. So it gives you the kind of the colors and then if you hover over them it's going to tell you kind of the transitions as how as as they go so like this one they all kind of slide in from the corner if you go down to this one they kind of fade in um, so you can sit here and look at what it's going to look like before having to like do everything and put them in another great thing is you can totally go through and make it in this blank template right here and then go back and change the template and it changes it on every single slide and you don't have like you can play around and see which ones you like see which ones you don't like um, go with that one because it says Valencia. Um, but again, the plus arrow is kind of your best friend. So you click it and it gives you the options. Um, so I can do text and I can type something in. Not HJ, that's not working. Um, if I go up here to the top, um, we'll look at music kind of at the end, but the layout is going to give you your different options. So I can do um, full screen in a thing which is basically the thing is going to be your words or your pictures that you want to add in. And then the full screen is going to be, say I want to put a photo there. So I'm going to find photos. I'm so glad they finally started using thing as a technical term. Isn't it great? <laughs> and so it, it puts it in there for you. Um, you can put a video back there if you wanted to. Um, just kind of whatever you want. And then down here it shows you how long it's going to stay on that slide. So I can change that if I wanted it to be 10 seconds, it can be 10 seconds. If I want it to be one second, it can be one. Um, but that gets ignored when you start using this button. The microphone is how you voice over. So if you have your kids talking about their family, um, they can say, so you hold it down. We'll see if it actually works. I don't know that it will this particular computer. Um, but you hold it down as long as you want to talk, and it tells you how long it's going. Um, so you know, hey, hi, this is my family, I'm going to talk about it, whatever. And then you only get a couple seconds though, because apparently I just ran over. Um, uh -oh. I bet it's 10 seconds. 10 seconds is the limit? Would be my guess. Oh. But how much do you really want them to talk on the same slide? Oh, sense. okay, that's so okay. Because you're, okay. you're not going to want to... That a quick break. Because as long, I mean, the your if your slide. kids are doing First this, slide. you're going to have hundred to look through. You don't want them to yeah. like make 10 minute videos and then you spend your entire semester grading the first thing you did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So you can uh, record that way and then you can go back and listen. Theoretically, I don't know why it's not letting me. But I can hit the play button down here. And it's going to pop up. It's being slow because everyone's on their own Wi-Fi and stuff. Um, but then, like I said, you have all these different options. So I click the plus button down here and it gives me another slide. And I can go through and say I want a thing plus a caption. So it's going to give you the thing up here in this, this outline box, and then your caption goes down here. Um, but it, if you notice, it gives you options. So I can do text. I can do a photo. Um, icons um, are going to be just kind of like kind of what it sounds like. Not really images, just kind of like black and white pictures. Um, so like anything related to France. So here's you know a very poorly drawn. <laughs> doesn't even look like France, version of France. Um, or I could look at you. That's more, it looks more like that than France. You are absolutely correct. Um, 
So like on the example video you guys watched, it had that picture of the family. That was an icon, the, just the kind of stick figures. Um, you can upload your own pictures. Um, you can't, and this is kind of the thing that bugged me when I was doing it, you can't upload directly from your Google Drive, unless I'm just an idiot and couldn't figure it out. Um, you can do Google Photos, so if you have a photo album in Google set up already, you can pull them from that. Um, I don't have that, so I couldn't do it, so I had to save it to my desktop and then upload it that way. Um, but again, you can upload your own photos. If you use their fine photos, they're all the creative content license, so you you, know, you don't have to worry about putting it out there and then getting sued. Um, and so you can make it as long as you want, just keep adding uh, more slides. I think there is a limit, now that I say that, and I don't know what it is, but I mean, if you're having a kid make one or two presentations, you're not gonna meet it. Does that make sense? Like, you have enough space to do what you need to do. Uh, the music um, is background music. So you can, if you want music on it, you can. If you don't want music, you don't have to have it. Um, but you can go through and play and kind of figure out what you want. So if I want a careful C, oh man, it sounds real careful to me. If you want, oh, I want a cup of sugar. So you can go through and it just plays it in the background. And then your voice is gonna be louder than it so you can still hear. And so it gives you kind of that feel of, they spent a lot of time making this and it looks real kind of professional. Um, and it really only took 10 minutes. Uh, and then you can even upload your own. Again, though, all of the ones that are here are free and you don't have to worry about getting sued by anyone. Nice. So be careful if you add your own. Um, let's go back to the layouts for a second so we can look. Um, the two things, um, this is what I used on that, that um, the one in the example. So I could put a picture of a family member and then I could put my writing over here um, and then they can read it or you could even just put like bullet points. This is their name, this is their age, this is what they like and then the student has to say, oh, this is my sister, she likes to do this, she likes to do this. Um, this is, or if you're doing like, this is Madrid, I saw this, I saw this, I went here. Um, if you're doing like a city unit, this is the bakery, I bought this here, I bought this here. Um, I know kind of the notes that as kind of a second year unit on our campus, um, we have like, we kind of show like this is the place and then these are some things you can do here, these are some things you can buy here. Um, so you could have your kids, oh, at the bakery, I bought this, I bought this, I saw this, I saw this, I saw this. So it's, and again, like we said earlier, it's really as far as your imagination can take you into this. Um, you just have to play around with it and that's my biggest soapbox that I get on the technology when I'm talking to my teachers play with it, you're not going to break anything. Mm -hmm. And if you do break something, they have people that get paid huge amounts of money to fix it. And I bet that anyone sitting in this room is not like a weapon of mass destruction that's going to knock down Adobe. <laughs> like, it's Adobe. Everyone uses Adobe. So play with it um, and see, you know, just kind of get the feel of it. Um, and it's not, like, it's not a, it's not a hard thing. And you have all, like I said, you know, and I just thought it's one thing. It's two things. It's like I made this. Um, I'm going to ask y'all what you want to do because that took a little bit longer and that's awesome. I love idea I love going off track. Do you want to have some time to kind of play around with Adobe or do you want to move on and look at um, Smart Amp? It's totally up to you. We'll go into Smart Amp yeah. okay. since I don't. Some of you don't have Chromebooks and stuff. It might be a little bit difficult. Um, but if you have, like I said, if you have this, um, if you got the link or whatever, it has the examples that are in here. If you want to do that, but like I said, just play with it. It's it give, anytime it has a plus sign, you can add something. Anytime there's a button, click it and um, and mess around with it. Um, Go back to present. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna look at is Smart Amp. Like I said earlier, it's a large digital workspace where students can work together. Um, again, this there's some links on here, so we're gonna watch a kind of the Smart Amps, you know, the 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 
you know, when you're like out of school for like a month and then you can't speak in public anymore, and it's like, <laughs> how do I do this for a living? Um, they're like, the video that they put out as a company, uh, just to kind of see it. Um, but under it, if you click on use your guide when you, you know, later when you're looking through this, um, I don't know if this, I think this was put together by them, but it's LIC kind of gave it to us. But if you click that, it's going to open and it gives you like their whole, like, how to use it. So their user guide and there's 88 pages worth of information if you get bored this summer. Um, but it, like, it tells you how to do it. Also, I put in here, if you go to this link right here, um, it's going to take you to the presentation that LISD Digital Learning uses. Um, LISD teachers will be able to see it. I'm not entirely sure if you'll be able to if you're not. I don't know what they did their settings as, and I'm That's not okay. important enough to have the ability to say I mean, people can use this. Um, but I would assume you can, but I don't know. Um, so we'll kind of go over this for a second, and then we'll watch the video. So in Smart Ant, and it's done by the same people that do SmartBoard. So LISD people are pretty familiar with that. I don't know about people who aren't in LISD. Um, but you basically you can assign different areas of a workspace to students. So it's going to give you, you can do like concept maps. You can do um, Venn diagrams. There's like um, the temp, one of the templates looks kind of like a, it's like movie film. And you could do like a, like a timeline or anything like that. Um, but you can use it as kind of a presenting tool, or you can give it to the kids and have them do the assignments on that workspace. So it's kind of think like centers, but you still don't have to get up and move. So for your lazy kids, it's great. For your kinesthetic kids that you want to punch in the face, it's not. Um, again, uses your Google account. So you, know, you don't have to sign up for anything else. You're already there. Um, there's a code um, that you can give the students to join in, or you can invite them um, by email. I will say it's much easier to create the class and put all the kids in in the first than having to go back and find the code because I had to like look in four different places three different times last night to find where my code was. Um, but it's, it's all there anyway. <clears throat> um, there's a follow me mode that if you want to use it as a presentation, the kids kind of lose all control. So they're looking at their screens and you're saying, we're going to look here. Now we're going to look here and on their screen, it changes to look there. So it's kind of like if you've ever used Nearpod or Pear Deck where you control their screen. Um, but there's also a pass control. So you can have the kids you know, work on their different aspects of it and their groups. And then you can kind of take control using the follow me and say, OK, now we're going to present what we did. We're going to talk about it. Um, everyone's going to see the different um, aspects of what everyone did, and then you can pass the control. So I'm going to pass it to Nacho, and Nacho is going to present to all of you his part of it. And then I'm going to pass it to Rudy, and Rudy's going to present his. And so that student then gets to control what everyone else sees on their computer. Um, and they don't have to like stand up in front of everyone and have that like intimidation factor. Um, there's a bookmark spot. So if you're, and you'll see when we kind of look at it in a second, it's basically like a big piece of paper. And so if you want to zoom in on something, you can bookmark it. And so when you're giving your notes, you can say, oh, I'm going to bookmark here. And then it zooms in on that part of the presentation. Or if you're having kids work in different spots, um, you can bookmark, oh, this is group one. And so group one clicks that bookmark, and it takes them to their part of the workspace. Then bookmark group two, and it takes them to their part of the workspace. So it just kind of, it just kind of zooms in on the specific area you want them working on. Um, you can add questions, videos, PDFs, images. Um, Kind of one of the cool things, if you had a question, it gives you data. Um, like I said, I kind of this is all still new to me, so I haven't, I don't have any data, and I don't know what it looks like because I haven't had kids since I've learned about this. Um, but it, because they log in, you know who it is, and then there it uh, it asks you the different kind of questions, and you can do multiple choice, you can do short answer, you can do uh, new uh, numeric answers and it, it'll kind of collect all that data for you. Um, since it is part of the Smart Notebook, there's the pen software. So you can you know, go up and write on the board and add things in as need be. Um, and then there's also messaging tools. So you can have, say I want a kid here, and I want a kid here working on the same one, but I don't want them to get up and walk because they're going to you know, hit the back of the head of seven different kids as they walk across the room. So they can work, and they can be totally silent and type on opposite sides of the room and still be able to communicate. And as you're the teachers, you can see everything. 
And you can be like, oh, here's your pink slip because I just saw what you typed. Uh, and then you can see everything that's on there. And then like we already said, made by the same people that did the smart. Um, so before we kind of look at the one that I made, kind of just yeah, I had a question. I just never kind of like caught the last thing you said. You can see who did what on the mm -hmm. workspace, and so they can get the pink slip for backwards or whatever. But uh, that also, like that's at the end of everything. You get to see who the slacker you was. Can see it as there's an option um, where you can, it says like highlight students or something, and it's gonna put a box around what each student did okay. and put like their name. So like, we'll look at one in a second and it's gonna, everything's gonna be purple and it's gonna say AT because I did everything. Okay. Um, but once you guys start moving in, kind of looking at it and working with it, um, it'll highlight like this person did this, this person did that. Okay. So and it's, very, it's very much again like Google where you can see who's doing what and it's gonna tell you. So the slacker will get docked because it's like, oh, okay, yeah. well, you typed your name, good job. Yeah. And the rest of your you did nothing else. you, yeah. and so you're not getting an A. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just troubleshooting. Um, so maybe my job of the group was to type the whole thing. So you just, you just won't catch anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so we'll watch kind of their video, see what they say is up, and then we'll look at some stuff at the different aspects. And here at SMART, we understand that magic happens when students work together to create, discuss, challenge, and develop deeper critical thinking skills through collaboration. SMART app allows teachers and students to explore, co-create content, while teachers can see real time how students are contributing and learning. There's nothing else like it out there. So let's see what SMART app's all about. We start off in a workspace, a huge open digital canvas that enables multiple contributors to work together simultaneously. This workspace is an open environment for student work. But when teachers want to review, they can take control, pass control, and save bookmarks for easy navigation. From there, it's easy to use content from YouTube, Khan Academy, Smart Notebook, or our great partners like Discovery Education and Hope Myth and Hardcore. You can also use pre-created lesson templates and activities from Smart Exchange. While the lesson is in progress, with features like embedded assessment and chat, teachers can see exactly what students are working on, allow them to understand, assess, and guide collaboration without interrupting learning. They can even see exactly who contributed what to each project, meaning there's finally visibility into everyone's contribution in the group. Wherever you are, whatever device you're using, SmartAmp provides the platform for getting the most out of technology in your classroom. You can help foster skills that will be critical for future success, all while keeping students excited and engaged in the lesson. Okay. I think I don't know how to use technology. Huh? Um, so that was kind of the, you know, their corporate version of, hey, let's look at all this stuff. Um, but you kind of saw some of the templates and all the, all the, the different aspects. Um, I made one yesterday that we're going to look at. Yeah, so, um, so if you'll do what it says here, if you'll go to smartamp.com, um, I don't know what it looks like on a mobile device. I'm sorry, I should have troubleshooted that last night, but no. when do we ever prepare as thoroughly as we should? Not in June. Exactly. <laughs> I was doing star retesting yesterday and my partner was like, do you want to leave or do you want me to leave? I know you have a presentation and then I was like, do you really think I'm going to work on this at 12 o'clock? No, so I can stay. I'm just as big of a slacker as the students are. So there's that. So it's just smartamp.com, smart and then AMP, um, and then it's going to ask you to log in, and it's your Google account. So LISD people, first name, last name. Other people, I don't know. And then the code is there: four seven six zero. Four 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 zero six.
we say we're a student since we're both Bobby and Peter? Um, I know sometimes if you say a student, then you can't change it back last time. Um, is that before or after you signed it? I just signed it. Okay, then click. Are you student? No. Okay. When it asks if you're student, say no. I'm scared if you say yes, it's never going to let you go in and create oh, a teacher account. Yeah, really shoot myself in the foot. It's kind of like class. You set it up the first time and you're the teacher, but you can still join other classes. Uh, while you're doing that, if you look up here, this is what the teacher version looks like. Like once you kind of set it up, your classes are going to be up here. I only have the one, um, but then it you know, tells you how many kids you have um, logged into it. So that should match what's on here. Sure, we do not currently support smartphones. It may not work on. I think. Uh, you. I don't guess. Android works, but iPhone doesn't. Let me see if I actually open it. Well, there was a workspace there yesterday. <laughs> This is super embarrassing. Did you forget to say? I guess I did. So we're going to see what it's like to make one. Um, so if you click the create a workspace, um, it's going to give you templates. Um, there's not, yeah, there's not one. I messed up on that one, sorry. You could get on my Please, was this create a workspace? I don't see that here. So I went to go to workspaces, and then I went to. The only time I ever did is whenever I was on only level two, and I had a creative process. So it gives you these. You can do a blank tipple and then go in and add your own boxes and stuff. Uh, but then it gives you the other ones. So if you want a graph, if you want categories, um, so you can kind of think of the different aspects you can do. I know in um, first year for us, we have a unit where they kind of like talk about, this is what I do at the beach. This is what I do in the mountains. This is what I do in the city. This is what I do, there's a fourth one, country, yeah. And so, I mean, you could have one for each one and then kids go through and you know put what they do there. Or, um, I mean, we have a graphic organizer that looks almost exactly like that. Um, you could do a chart, so you could do, you know, tell me what you did here, tell me what you did here, or tell me what you did today, tell me what you did yesterday, tell me what you're going to do tomorrow. Uh, then there's different concept maps, um, kind of keywords, so like the cloud one you could think, uh, we're doing the city, so I'm going to put the bakery here. On the left side I want things you can do at the bakery, on the right side I want things you can, you'll see at the bakery, or you know, objects associated with the bakery. Um, you have a poster board option, and you're just kind of whichever one you prefer aesthetically. I like this one better, but the tape bugs me. Am I the only one that just, I don't, why are you putting this ugly tape on that? That It makes me, it annoys me. Irrationally so, but it does. Um, you can do a storyboard. Um, so like I know with us in second year, we do a lot of uh, comic strips. And there's some where they have to make their own comics. So you could say, and I kind of took that into first year sometimes. And so like when you're doing like chores and stuff like that, you could do like a Cinderella comic. So you could say, I want this group to do, you know, when she's doing this chore versus this chore, and you know, like kind of set up each kit, each group with a different aspect of the story. Or different rooms. Yeah, yeah, that's an even better idea. I think. Uh, or you can do like one of those like stories where they're like, you start it off and then you go, and so it's kind of like. You get everyone's input. Um, there's a timeline, so I know that we do a lot with, um, like in the travel unit, because a lot of our kids don't travel, so they don't know what you do at the airport. So you know, do you do this before you go to security? Then you go through this, and then you do this, and then. Y'all uh, do the. Uh, Y'all do the. Uh, hold on, give me one second. <clears throat> the healthy choices, mm -hmm. like um, you can start in the morning. 
Yeah, you do your daily routine. Your daily routine. That's mm -hmm. Yeah. So I wake up, I do this, and assign kids to you know different aspects. You're the morning group. You're the just got out of bed group. You're the the at the school group. You're the morning classes. You're the lunch. You're the and so you know each one gets a different kind of aspect. Um, and then you can do Venn diagrams. Um, and so you can kind of like you can have every kid just kind of like I want you all to go in and put something somewhere. So like say it's like you know schools in France versus middle school versus high school or you know whatever your three categories are. I can say I want everyone to just go in and put what they want or I can assign kids like I want these four kids you're going to tell me what schools are like in France and then you know what what's the similarities between schools in France and schools in America. I want you to tell me what schools in America are like and tell me the similarities between schools in America and schools in France. I want you guys to tell me um, what our school is like compared to this. So you can, you know, you can have it, everyone does kind of like brainstorming, throws ideas out, or you can have each kid responsible for their own, uh, for their own section. You can tie this, to, remember that reading about that, uh, I forget what the name of the kid was, Nicholas? I don't know, but there's, and have, have them, as they're reading, even in English, put in what he did, like follow his day instead of, wow, my brain's working. Okay. Not that your brain doesn't work. I'm apparently just like me today. You think I had enough coffee? Um, so I'm just gonna pick one so we can kind of go in and look at the different things you can do. I'm gonna do the one with tape so I can be like torturing myself the whole time. Sure. Um, so you, you name it. I can. I don't know why it's tape. Are you not logged into Drive? Very have one in practice. Well, this is looking embarrassing. Okay, what's mine? Is yours popping up? Uh, it's, yeah, it's pretty uh, filled in. I should. I don't want to let, even let you come. Yeah, it says right there. That was a really poor choice on their part. Let's make that say that. Let's try change class one. What you love when you're presenting when things don't work? Mm -hmm. You look like you know what you're talking about. See, mine's pretty populated. I wonder how I did that. I don't need work when I made the presentation. Let's try if we go back this way. Another thing you can import directly from your classes directly from Google Classroom. So if you have that already set up, you don't have to go through the steps of like add in this clip, but you did the one time Google Classroom, and then when you go through this way, it's already there. Um, this is really cool once you get used, once you um, start using it. Um, again, like I said, I haven't gotten to use this in a classroom setting yet, so I don't know kind of management-wise how it would work. Um, I will say when you're creating your classrooms and stuff, on the, or the, the workspaces on the left-hand side, it gives you all of your options, and you just kind of go down the side so you can add students to it, you can do your bookmarks. Um, and like I said earlier, the bookmark, it really just zooms in on that area. So when you want to create the bookmark, you just zoom in on the area. So it's going to bookmark where you are on the page. Um, there's a video tab, and it, it has videos. I want to say the library has like YouTube and Khan Academy and you know all the educational video sites that are out there. Um, so it's easier than having to like, I'm going to go to YouTube, and I'm going to find this video, and then I'm going to copy the link, I'm going to put it in, it already embeds it in there for you. Um, like I said earlier, the question aspect, it gives you, um, there's a multiple choice, there's a short answer, there's a, 
um, numeric, so it's just kind of how you want it. And it really hates me today, and I'm really annoyed. Um, trying to think of the other things that are on there. You can add images, you can add pictures, you can add text. Um, so you can really, if you're really creative, you can do the blank one and make your own and put in your own images and stuff. Um, our campus has a biomedical engineering program, and kind of their first year they do, like this girl dies, it's not like a real person, that would be illegal. Um, but they have to like go through their whole purpose of the class that year is to figure out how she died and like the cause of death and stuff, and they do evidence boards. And um, our teacher is gonna is talking about using this next year. So it's you know you can put your document and you can put PDFs and all that kind of stuff in there. So you can put a reading in there and have the kids have uh, questions right next to it. Um, you can have a video and say you know watch this video. Here's some questions about it. Um, you can put images. You know here's a map of France. Where's the city? The city. A, B, C, or D. Um, so it's just all stuff like that. Um, and it's obviously not working, and I'm really sorry about that. Um, but you, know, you can't, can't want them all. Um, but if this is something you want to use, um, remember on the, the, the first um, title slide for SmartAmp, the user guide is right there. Um, so it, like it was 88 pages, so you can go through and read. Um, they have tutorials and stuff, just like every other educational website there is. I just did a search on YouTube. There's a ton of mm -hmm. videos on yeah. And I think with YouTube, it, it's like, I mean, it gives you all YouTube. It's not, you know, like just the specific, like with those other searches we were doing in uh, Adobe, where it's like content, uh, whatever the copyright thing is. Um, I think you get more options with it. Um, but the user guide's right here. I mean, then, just for tutorial. Oh, for tutorial. Yeah, yeah. On how to. Yeah, yeah. And then they have there's stuff out there that other people smart. doing it. So yeah. if you if you want that, um, LISD people, there's the link to the presentation they use. Um, there is also um, for LISD people, uh, Laura and Hickman, who's with LISD Digital Learning, is doing. She has a, it's a four hour presentation. Um, it's July 11th um, at Smith Elementary. Um, I checked last night, and it would still you still have the option to sign up in Edgeforia. So if that's something, if this is something you want to use, definitely go. Um, Lauren's a good presenter; she knows what she's talking about. Um, she's the one that presented this to me. Um, it was in a setting kind of like this, though, where we only had an hour, and so it wasn't very in depth. But um, if you're interested in it, that's available. Um, I don't know for you non LISD people, you might you could email her and see maybe I don't know. Um, we only have about seven minutes left, so we're not gonna really go over this last little bit. Um, but if you have the if you have the presentation, you have access to it, and there's some kind of step by steps. Basically, what it is, and I'll just quickly go over it so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Um, if your lesson plans are in a Google format, um, I know our campus likes us to have a folder so we can share it with you know our department and our principals and stuff like that, and everyone can see them. But it gets real tedious when you have to go through and like your objective is the same thing, or you know, you have to type in your teeks and it's just kind of a pain. Um, if you, there's a way to link a Google form to a Google Doc so that you fill out the form and it automatically puts it in. Um, there's some steps in here. Um, so creating the forms and stuff like that. Um, there's examples, and as far as I know, you should be able to see them. Um, if not, let me know if you, you know, try to look at this later and it's not working, I can go through and uh, mess with the settings. Um, but basically you create the lesson plan um, with all the information you know that you would have to put in, so the date, um, the class, and you know I have a million preps, so I you know put that in there and then it automatically uh, so you know you're using your tools so you don't have to type in over and over again. I type those five things in once and then you know I'm doing a French one lesson plan, I'm gonna click French one. And then I don't have to type the French one every single time. Um, you know your title, your central question, your teeks, um, and this was a apparently there's an option for teak. Um, <laughs> this is a list Laura Cook, our person, gave us when we were kind of learning about this. I don't know how your districts kind of want to. If you need to go, this, these are the I think the, the lower level teeks. 
So if you're going to teach AP and stuff, you'll have to go in and find the other ones. But in that folder that, it, that you got at the beginning, it's in a list format. And the really awesome thing with um, Google Forms is if you copy and paste a list into it, it's going to put each section into another bullet point. So when you're making the form, if you just put it in, um, I did check boxes because you know you meet different teaks with every lesson. Um, so if you know you you choose the option for your question as uh, check boxes and then just control V in the first one. Theoretically, it's going to do all of this for you, so you don't have to go in and do like add question, add question. Um, another and I'll kind of just do this real quick so you can see what it looks like. Um, Uh, another kind of tip that, that they gave us when they were showing us how to do this is make them require questions. That way you can't submit it until you actually fill everything out so you're not you know, slacking. I slacked on some of them. So you know, there's a vocabulary, you know, the opening of your lesson, your actual lesson, your closing, whatever your assessment is, your higher level, what, you know, what, and you can go through and you can make it whatever is required for you. Then when you submit it, it's going to take you to a folder. And the, the instructions on how to do this are in there. It's kind of confusing if you're reading it by yourself. So if you decide this is something you want to do and you're trying to do it and you don't understand it, feel free to email me. Um, and I'll try to help walk you through it. Um, I click random things right there. There it is. Um, so once you hit submit, it's going to take it it's going to take you. Um, sorry, it's going to put it in. I think it puts it in that folder there. Yeah. No, it's the other folder. No, it's not. It's going to put it in a form in a doc. <laughs> And it's not going to work because it hates me right now. Um, but basically what you do is you set up the form with all the, all the questions and all the answers and everything you need. Then you go in and you set up the template for the, for the document. So like on this one, I like it in, in, a, in a, a kind of grid format. It's a little bit easier for me to read. And so you set up you know, what you want. So my date's going to go here, my class is going to go here, my title here. And then this text over here is your, your labeling. So you just type this in normally. Um, and then you go through and so and where you want the actual information to go you're going to type the, whatever that question was so like here a central, a central question was the question in the form for my essential question does that make sense mm -hmm. so you put that in those two brackets like that and then it's going to link them together and so whatever I clicked for a cent or whatever I typed in for a central question is going to pop up in that box and then whatever formatting you have so like here that's written in the blue ink it's going to show in that blue ink. So if I wanted it to be like everything a different color, I'm just going to put it a different color on here and it's going to pop up that way. Um, kind of the linking tool that you have to use is an add-on. Um, and it tells you all of this in the slide, but again, if it's confusing, feel free to email me and I'll, I'll try to make it a little bit less confusing. Um, but it, it's called Form Publisher. So if you go into the little, um, let's find the, um, so like if you're opening your form, you have this, um, the snowman, the three dots up in the corner. If you click that and then go to um, add-ons, the first time when you have to find it, and you'll click on that and then search for form publisher. And it looks like this, it's purple, looks like a cow or a monkey. I'm not really sure what that is. Um, but then once you have it downloaded, you'll go to the puzzle piece and click on it, um, and then just kind of follow the instructions. If, sorry, we kind of ran out of time. But that's how life works sometimes, right? Um, if you have any questions for me, my contact information is in that folder. Feel free to email me. Um, I'll try to get back to you timely. It comes to my phone, so usually I don't totally ignore it. But you feel free to like in all caps in the subject letter answer me, you annoying person. <laughs> <laughs>